Since the foundation of Rangers in 1873, its stature and power has grown, making it one of the most famous clubs in the world. As a result, the footballers who were fortunate enough to play at Ibrox had to be a special breed, men who upheld the tradition of the club and would give their all to win. There's McCoy to the clear, a chance for Rangers. Here's McCoy, he must score! That heritage led Rangers to instigate a tribute to the Rangers greats, an award ceremony like no other to honour the greatest players who wore the light blue jersey. For everyone connected with Rangers, from members of staff to supporters, it was a unique occasion. The night brought together famous players from the past, such as Jock Tiger Shaw, <laughs> Willie Woodburn and Ralph Brand, Jimmy Miller, Jim Baxter and Sandy Jarden. Overall, there were 150 Rangers players in attendance each one signing a framed canvas which was auctioned for charity. We were running a series in the uh, Rangers publications, the Match Day magazine, just to highlight the careers of the many great players who've been here at Ibrox over the years. And the idea was born that we should try and get these guys together for one special night uh, to honour every single one of them, but especially the one or two who've made a, a, a very important uh, contribution to Rangers Football Club. And what we decided to do then was to involve the supporters and ask them uh, what they thought and we've asked them to pick their top team and indeed the greatest ever Ranger. And so almost 1,000 guests from almost every era of the club's history were present at the Thistle Hotel for the awards ceremony. It was to be an unforgettable night for all of them. The first award was to be one of the most difficult to choose, the greatest goal. When you think of the hundreds, the thousands of goals that have been scored in the last 126 years, how can you possibly pick out the best? I suppose the video age helps a little bit. Those great goals of the 1890s and the 1920s, I'm afraid, are confined only to memory. But a decision has been made, and we can now enjoy what your committee decided is the greatest Rangers goal of all from a short lead of six. Enjoy these six, and which one would you choose? Head forward, Johnston. Well, I don't know how McLean missed that one. And somebody's foot stopped that one. That is a goal by Johansson. Well, there it is. Johansson, the first Danish player ever to appear in a cup final. A long throw, looking for Hatley's flick on. That's McCoy, he's through the acrobatic effort! McCoy, he's done it for Rangers! Hateley. Oh, a great goal! A fantastic goal for Rangers by Mark Hateley! Dave Cooper was the best of the game. I only hope Rangers have Cooper's left foot well insured.
tough old choice, isn't it? Very tough choice. In the end, though, the decision of the committee, and uh, I can't argue with them, the driver of Cup final of 1979, the greatest goal, Davy Cooper. Davy was one of the most skillful players to play for Rangers. His legendary left foot, shown here at its best, could outwit any defence, not only providing goals, but in this case, scoring an unforgettable one. As one of several surprises on the evening, David Murray and Donald Finlay have decided to instigate a Rangers Hall of Fame. The first is a man whose name is very much still synonymous with Ibrox. His name adorns a suite which is used by our club sponsors, McEwan's Lager, and his portrait hangs proudly in that suite. In the Rangers trophy room in one of the cabinets, one of our prized possessions are the many medals that he collected as a player. Truly one of the Rangers greats of all time, Mr. Bob McPhail. Bob McPhail scored in the 1928 Cup final defeat of Celtic, ending the 25-year hoodoo in the competition. He also held the league scoring record of 235 goals until 1995 when it was broken by Ali McCoyst. The second is a man whose nickname perhaps tells you all you would need to know about him. He truly epitomised everything of the Rangers fighting spirit, respected by the Rangers supporters and by the supporters and players of every club he played against. It's tremendous when you go around supporters functions and this man you still meet and he's still popular with people who are only in their teens because they rightly know the name of Jock Tiger Shaw. Jock Shaw, the great fullback and captain, played 230 games from 1946 until 1953, and he's still remembered for his never say die attitude and his tremendous determination. And ladies and gentlemen, the third and final member of the new Rangers Hall of Fame is for me a very special person to announce to you because as a laddie he was my late father's favourite player and he admired him because of his courage and he was one of those men who made Rangers what they are he had the never accept defeat attitude and with players like him it's small wonder this club is as great as it is ladies and gentlemen the third member of the Hall of Fame the truly great Mr Willie Woodburn <laughs> Willie Woodburn was arguably the greatest centre half of his generation. He had a fiery temperament. The feat for his club was taken personally. However, he won four league championship titles and four Scottish Cups and epitomised what being a Ranger was all about. The next award was for the greatest non-Scot. It was presented by former Ranger Jimmy Nicol. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour for me to be here tonight. As you know, our illustrious career at Rangers. 1983, assigned for John Gregg on Thursday night, and he resigned on Friday morning. <laughs> 1986, great, happy days went back, and then uh, Graham Sheenos and Walter Smith turned around and said to me in a summer of 88, you fancy taking reserves? I said, yes, I'd love that. And Graham says, good job, we've just bought Gary Stevens. <laughs> but it is a great honour. It's a great night, and it's great meeting all the players. The nominations are for the best known Scott. One, Mark Hitley, two, Paul Gascoigne, and three, Brian Lydrup. And the winner is Brian Loudrop. When Brian arrived at Ibrox in 1994, he immediately made the supporters take notice from his debut against Motherwell until he left in 1998. 
His skill was breathtaking, not only tearing defences apart, but providing chances for his teammates. Robertson towards Loudrup, he's on against McManus, he's still on his feet. And this is Jury, surely the fourth. This is Loudrup. Van Gossen says when he wants the ball played, Devin won't let him go there, and Loudrup does it by himself. Chance for the second. Oh, that's great play by Loudrup. Loudrop starts a run through the middle from where he's here. The goalkeeper has committed himself. This surely must be a goal. Brilliant finish by Loudrop. Such entertaining and vital performances have already made Brian the type of footballer who will be remembered for decades as a great Rangers player. There's a slip by O'Neill and Loudrop to win. Rangers look for a goal and get one. In the eighth minute from Brian Loudrup. Well, I'm uh, I'm speechless. Um, I said when when I got the the Player of the Year award uh, a couple of years back, that I was very proud. But I must say, I'm even more proud tonight. Um, if you look at the number of foreign players that have played for this unique club, uh, then it's fantastic to be chosen as the, one of the best players, uh, non-Scott players, to play for this great club. So I want to thank you once again and enjoy the evening. Thank you. And our next category is that of the greatest goalkeeper to play for Rangers. Again, a tough old choice. Robert now getting boxed into a corner. That's a good piece of defending by Miller, really. That has taken the stinger of that Celtic attack. That's Sullivan. The low one in. And a fine save from Peter McCloy denies Mike Conroy. And the winner is Andy Gorham. Andy Gorham is one of the most popular players ever to play for Rangers. And even though he now plays for Premier League rivals Motherwell, he's still treated as a hero by the Ibrox fans. Thank you very much. First of all, um, I'm really pleased to see so many friends that we've been here all the years of, that we've played together, past and present. It's an honour and a pleasure to be with so many great legends, past and present. I'd like to wish the club all the very best in the future. Thank you very much. During Andy's career at Ibrox, he proved time and again his worth to the club, demonstrating how a goalkeeper, in many ways, can be just as important as the greatest striker. Setting up for Galloway. Queuing up in the middle for this. Here's Collins. Setting it up for Paul McStay. The great effort by McStay and the save from Andy Gorham denies the Celtic captain. It's a shot one for McStay. Marvellous save by Andy Gorham from Darius Dovchak. Richardson with a free kick, McLeish has gone forward, so is Irvin. Matalainen nodding it across. And a great save again from Gorham. Ian Jess holds his head, he can't believe it. Well, Andy Gorham undoubtedly the Rangers here on the first half. It's Clark who strikes it. 
That's a marvellous save by Andy Gorham. Andy gave his all each time he played for Rangers, but it was his performances against Celtic that supporters will remember best. Next day picks up the loose ball, Bata free in the right. Next day again, that's for Bata. Good position for Celtic. Now Paul McStay, the great save again from Gorham. McStay can scarcely believe it. Goalie challenge as well. McStay's there for Celtic. That's good play by McStay. The chance is up for Collins. That's a magnificent save by Andy Gorham. There's Van Hoyda. Great save by Gorham. A chance though for Celtic. Andreas Tom, Rudy Vata has scored against Rangers with a free kick at the end of the last season and John Collins makes a habit of it he's over the ball there's Collins magnificent save from Gorham played off by Tom, it's Collins again good play by Collins Tom, a nice change of direction, challenged by Goff this is Tosh McKinley, that's a great cross what an incredible save by Andy Gorham from Van Hoydon. Andy Gorham was a true blue. Apart from outstanding technical ability, he also knew what playing for the jersey was all about, and rightfully took the award of greatest goalkeeper. We've uh, made presentations to the greatest non-Scots, we've made presentations to our A presentation to the greatest goalkeeper, I think it's time now we made the presentation to the greatest striker. Again, an enormously difficult choice. And to introduce the greatest striker in Rangers history, former captain Terry Butcher. I mean, it's, quite, it's quite fitting that I should be nominated or awarding the uh, top striker, as I was the, the person who uh, scored the most goals past Graham Souness's side in my four years. <laughs> And we were actually talking about we should have an own goals award. But then Richard Goss said, I would probably get one, two, and three. <laughs> but the nominations for the striker are Mark Haightley. <laughs> Derek Johnson. <laughs> and Ali McCoy. Stager, Ali McCoy. You don't have to. <laughs> um, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, if I could be serious just for a wee minute, <laughs> uh, that result today I hope finally dispels the <laughs> dispels the conspiracy theory that me and my wee pal don't try against the old firm. <laughs> On a more serious note, my best non-Scot would have been Stuart McCall. You had to get your mention somewhere, wee man. But in all serious, to stand here before Derek Johnson, Ralphie Brand, Jimmy Miller, Mark Haightley, Colin Steen, Mr McPhail, 
I just, honest to God, cannot believe it. And thanks very, very, very much. Thank you. Ali McCoyst, MBE, is the most prolific striker ever to play for Rangers. He broke every goal-scoring record in the club's history and became a hero to the Rangers supporters. Didn't fall kindly for Miller. Gascoigne. Great chance there. It's in. It's a goal for Rangers. Scored by McCoyst. From his earliest days, Ali had shown himself to be an opportunist striker, able to be in the right place at the right time. Some say he was extremely lucky, but his record shows that luck had little to do with it. Down to the ball, beating Grant, here's McCoyst. Magnificent goal, Ali McCoyst! With Ferguson, as soon as it's free in the middle, got a lot of space. He also has Cooper free on the left. Now a chance for Rangers, Cooper taking on McGrain. That's McCoyst! A brilliant goal from Rangers! His ability to get behind defences was remarkable, even if sometimes his finishing was not always in the textbook style. Vinicom. Helped on by Johnston to the chance for McCoyst. That settles it. Even when consigned to the bench, he could be relied on to conjure up some magic. When he broke his leg in April 1993, the fairy tale continued when he returned as a substitute in the 1993 League Cup final. A long throw, looking for Hatley's flick on. Tweed is with him. That's McCoy for the acrobatic effort. McCoy does it for Rangers. He scores in the most spectacular fashion, and Rangers go in front again. Ali scored many remarkable and important goals against many clubs throughout his career. But the old firm clashes sharpened his killer instincts. Well, he'll force to hurry there. The breaks from McCall. He has McCoyst inside. That's for Ali McCoyst. And Rangers are ahead. Incensed by that is McCoyst in the clear. A chance for Rangers. Here's McCoyst. He must score. Rangers take the lead. Here's Dale Gold, this is a good chance for Rangers, right on a half-time whistle. Cross to Hadley, here's McCoyst! By 1998, he may have been an old stager, but Ali McCoy showed from his first goal to his last that Rangers will always be in his heart. When supporters come to see a match, they naturally concentrate on the 11 players on the pitch. However, to achieve success at a club as huge as Rangers, certain individuals steer the organisation towards their goal. Even the chairman of Rangers, David Murray, who knows everything about his club, is someone who can still be surprised on occasion. I think it is important to mention this. In this era of commercialism, I need to have big business associated with a club. I said in my introduction tonight that if anybody gave me money for the charities, I would keep it away from this man, because I can tell you he wouldn't want it, because he has never taken a penny from Rangers Football Club for himself. He's not in it for profit. He has only been in it because of his great love for our great club. He paid me a tremendous honour many years ago, and it's the greatest thrill in my life every single time 
I walk into Ibrook Stadium and go up the marble staircase. And that's because of the chairman of Rangers Football Club, David Murray. I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight, all Rangers greats and supporters who helped me with the success. And to show I'm not a biased man, I'd even like to welcome Jerry McNee here tonight. <laughs> but anyway, it's a great privilege tonight and a great honour for me. I care passionately about Rangers. I couldn't even eat last night. I hate defeat. I know you all hate defeat. And I know with Dick and the team of people here, we're going to retain our championship. I feel humble. You know, I know Johnny Hubbard as a young boy in air, the team that rejected me. <laughs> when he played for Air Cricket Club and I see Bob McPhail and all the Rangers greats here tonight, I'm very humble. I'm delighted to receive this honour. I don't look for honour. I'm only there when there's problems. I don't look for success. I just want Rangers to be successful, and that's all that matters to me. Thank you very much. The next winner of our uh, lifetime Oscars is somebody, however, who has not just served Rangers. If you go throughout uh, the world of football, the European scene, he is somebody whose name is well known to everybody who is involved in the administration of the game of football. He is hugely respected. He is somebody, if he was not involved with Rangers Football Club, would certainly be working in the very highest echelons of our game. You may not realise it, but the Champions League is his baby, his invention, he created it. And that's the calibre of the person that we have in the background at Ibrox, and it's right that we honour them and we honour him tonight. He's also a great personal friend. I know he will be a bit embarrassed by this, but Sec, come and get your award. Campbell Ogilvy. <clears throat> well, I am, I'm speechless, obviously. We're here tonight for the awards to the players. Uh, to the greatest players that have ever played for this club. I certainly didn't expect anything, Donald. Um, I've been with the club for 20 years. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm totally speechless. I'd just like to thank everyone I've worked with at the club over these years. And I know this is a night for the players. I'm quite happy in the background. But again, thank you very much. really appreciate it. Our third Lifetime Contribution Award is for a truly special man. He served this club in every single capacity possible and did so at the highest level. He was somebody who, as with our present chairman, became synonymous with Rangers Football Club. He would only be interested in success and he would tolerate no criticism from outside of anything or anybody connected with the club he loved. When I joined the board at Ibrox, the very first time I turned up for a game, it was tremendous thrill, very exciting. And I went home that night and I was asked by the family, well, what happened, what went on, who was there? And all I could say time and time again was that I met this man who I knew for all too short a time, but he was kind, he was generous, and he was giving to me. And I came to love him dearly, as everybody did who ever met him. I went home that night and was proud to say, I met Willie Waddle. Willie Waddle played his first reserve match in 1936, age 15. He went on to become manager, then vice chairman, and was connected with the club until his final days in 1992. In fact, Willie Waddle instilled into myself and probably into John what it is and what it means to be a ranger. He made sure that people understood the tradition and the heritage of the club and I think that's very, very important. He, he had a huge influence when he came back to the club. 
you'd have to say the club were a wee bit in the, the, the doldrums. They were drifting, standards were slipping a wee bit. Uh, he got back and uh, came back to the club and uh, he put it back on the rails. Uh, weeded out a lot of things and got it back to what it should be, but also installed in everybody what it means to be a Rangers player, what is expected. After the tragedy of 1971, in which 66 people died when Stairway 13 collapsed, Willie Waddle vowed it would never happen again and built most of today's magnificent stadium. He led the club to its only European trophy in 1972 and as a player he won four championships and two Scottish Cups. It's hard to underestimate his contribution to the club throughout his lifetime. Everyone in the auditorium was moved when Willie's widow, Hilda, accepted his award. Well, they would have been so proud and honoured to be here tonight. Rangers were his life, completely. I know he felt it a great privilege to serve Rangers as a player, as a manager, as a director. Everything was a joy to him. He just loved and he would be so proud tonight. And uh, his family are so proud to be here tonight too. Thank you very much. Earlier in the evening, Rangers were honoured by the City of Glasgow when Lord Provost Pat Lally presented Donald Finlay with a trophy to commemorate the extraordinary nine-in-a-row achievement. As you know, the building not far from here, the concert hall that you put a lot of effort into, became known as Lally's Pally. And as you were buying the drink tonight, we thought this might appropriately be called Lally's Swally, so thank you very much for that. And on behalf of the club, all I want to say is a very special thank you to some special guys, and that was every single player who was involved in that magnificent nine in a row run. The one thing about every one of them was they didn't know when they were beaten and that's why we were so successful and thanks to them all and that's what it means to be part of Rangers Football Club. Thank you and thank you guys. Let's move on then. The greatest Rangers team. Think about it. Pick 11 players of the hundreds of the thousands who have worn the light blue over more than a century. And I should point out that all of these 11 players will receive a very special memento, a medal, the classic Rangers V-neck strip with a commemorative badge. And that is something very special indeed. The goalkeeper and the greatest Rangers team of all played 258 times for the club, won five league championship medals, three Scottish Cup medals, two League Cup medals, Andy Gorham. Oh, a nice change of direction. Challenge of my golf. This is Tosh McKinley. That's a great cross. What an incredible save by Andy Gorham from Van Hoydon. At number two. A player who played 674 times for Rangers. He scored 77 goals as well. Three League Championships, five Scottish Cup, five League Cup, one European Cup, one Oscar Cup. It could only be Sandy Jordan. Set forward, Smith. Jardim. That's all by Jardim. It's a goal for Rangers. At five minutes to half time, that makes it Rangers 1, Celtic 0. Personally for me, I think that it's one of the, the greatest honours I've ever achieved. I've been very fortunate to win the Scottish Player of the Year twice, uh, but I think when you get voted by 50,000 supporters, 
it really struck home to me when I seen the, the people that were coming into the room. You know, you had Willie Woodburn, you had uh, Jock Shaw, you had uh, Bob McPhail, Jimmy Muller, Ralphie Brand, uh, Jim Baxter, all these sort of players. And uh, just to be in the, the company's players and then be selected for the, the greatest team is uh, something I'm really, really proud of. Sandy's selection was an obvious choice. Only John Gregg had made more appearances for the club. A brilliant fullback, he represented his country 38 times and in two World Cups. Although primarily a defender, he was also able to play sweeper, providing chances for his forwards. Derek Johnston gets number four. The goal stemming from Jardin. Jardin held off the challenge of Caldwell. There, when the cross came over, was Johnston swooping onto that one to give Allen no chance. Sandy was part of the teams which won trebles in '76 and '78. His cultured and dependable style of play allowed Rangers to attack with confidence. However, he could also score on his own. In 1967, when he scored in his old firm debut, Sandy Jardin stood for the traditions and the heritage of Rangers, endearing him to the fans and earning the respect of his fellow players. He is deservedly recognised as a great Ranger. Inside forward, Smith, Jardin. Rangers, with five minutes to half time, that makes it Rangers 1, Celtic 0. The number three jersey, you'll guess this one, 755 appearances, 120 goals, five league championships, six Scottish Cups, four League Cups and the European Cup Winners' Cup, John Gregg. John Gregg is an icon of Rangers. He epitomises the Rangers' philosophy. Always a hard yet fair player, he didn't know how to give up, no matter the opposition or the score. He's still working for the club and is naturally a candidate for the greatest Ranger of them all. The referee waving play on. For a moment, he gave the Celtic fans some hope that he appeared to run to the spot Wave play on. McDonald. McLean. Russell must score. Dragon Fuck finishes it off. Not a bad start. Let's go on to the number four jersey. Winning number four in our greatest ever team. A player who played 427 times for the club. Scored 84 goals. Nine league championships. Three Scottish Cups. Six League Cup medals. Former captain Richard Goff! Charlie Heller from Richard Goff, when Rangers take the lead, came to the corner kick, and I'll pass to the outswinger. Goff coming in here, got such good elevation, Hughes couldn't get him. The most successful Rangers captain in the club's history, Richard Goff will be remembered as a player of supreme dedication and determination. His devotion to the club was complete from the day he was signed by Graham Souness in 1987. A strong captain, he always led his defence by example, often being injured due to his intense desire to win the ball and prevent the opposition scoring. Even back in 1987, Richard seemed destined for great success when his first goal for the club was scored against Rangers' greatest rivals. Ferguson playing it wide. 
wide for Durant. Rogan comes to meet him. Oh, that's good running by Durant. He's away from Rogan. The early ball inside. McCarthy did well with the header, but it's Durant again. The last chance perhaps for Rangers. The chance is on for Goff. Richard Goff makes it two apiece. And the final minute of the match. What an incredible drama here at Ibrox. Richard's first championship was won in 1989. It was to herald a remarkable series of championship victories, of which Richard's presence became almost constant, but certainly vital. Mary Stevens hoisting the high one for Hadley, in comes Richard Gala! Oh, a captain's goal from Richard Gala! Chance for Van Hoydonk. Great tackle by Goff. Right at the last seconds. Richard had an iron will which never faltered in crucial situations. Always sound in defence, he could also move up into attack. His aerial supremacy giving Rangers another striking weapon. Goff's up there with a the header. And it's a goal from the captain. Richard Goff. Standing between these two. Low drop again showing great close control. Goff sir! And Richard Goff again leads by example. He gets his sixth goal of the season. A charming header from Richard Goff and Rangers take the lead. However, it will be the fact that he was a great captain and one of only three players to win nine consecutive championship medals that will ensure the name of Richard Goff is carved in the history books of Rangers. At number five, 176 appearances and 11 goals in the right direction. Three league championships, two league cup medals, the one and only Terry Butcher. There's Cooper, there's Butcher, he scored! Butcher has scored for Rangers! Yeah, you feel very humble. I mean, I stood on the stage and next to some really great players and you do feel very humble and you, know, so you wonder, well, what, what am I doing now? I only played for four years at the club, just over four years. And uh, it was a pretty tempestuous four years as it was, but uh, a lot of the players that were up there had given their whole life to the football club. And uh, you know, he's, it was very nice to, to have been voted by the supporters to be up there. But um, even if I wasn't on the stage, you know, just the fact that I had played for the club was uh, was you know, very pleasing, and it's a very special uh, memory that I'll always cherish. When it was rumoured that the captain of the England international side was to be signed by Rangers, many people said it would never happen. But Graham Souness was determined to change the image of Scottish football and a player of the calibre of Terry Butcher would possibly be his most important signing. Oh, that is a free kick. Free kick to Rangers. Wilkins will take this. Is Butcher with it? It's in! Butcher, the equaliser. Although not born a Rangers supporter, Terry quickly became wrapped up in Rangers and all it stood for. He rapidly earned the respect of his fellow players and supporters. In his first season, Rangers won the League Cup. But as always, the championship was of paramount importance. Rangers travelled to Aberdeen, knowing that a draw was all that was needed to win the league. There's Cooper. There's Butcher, he scored! Butcher has scored for Rangers! As captain, Terry was an immense influence on the team. His defensive presence was always outstanding and his never-say-die attitude affected the whole squad. He wasn't expected to score goals, but his power was sometimes used to great effect in attack. Let's 
Kutcher! Kutcher for Rangers! Five minutes gone! A dream start for Rangers! The presence, the physique, the heading ability of Terry Butcher exemplified with that tremendous effort. The power beat by Bonner. Terry's style of play and commitment to the club rightly place him in the greatest Rangers side ever. Even today, he still remembers his Ibrox days with a sense of fulfilment. And once you play for Rangers, you'll always be uh, a teddy bear, as they say, but you'll always be part of that family. And, and to have been part of a, a Rangers squad, whether it be successful, whether it be um, relatively a poor side or a bad side or whatever, you're still part of it. And you still will always be classed as a former Rangers player. I think that's a, it's a good thing to have in your CV, but uh, more importantly, it's a good thing to have in your heart because it, Rangers Football Club will always be there. Thousands upon thousands of Rangers fans from Govan to Guatemala voted for the greatest ever team. And uh, just about everyone went for the same player to wear the number six jersey. 254 appearances and 24 goals, three league championships, three Scottish Cups and four League Cups. The number six jersey in the greatest Rangers team goes to Slim Jim Baxter. There he is, Jim Baxter. So much fight in the Scottish side. Jim McAuliffe leading it for law again. Scotland slowing it down. Taking the mickey out of this England side. Jim Baxter was probably the most individual player ever to pull on a blue jersey. His arrogant style had the Ibrox fans roaring for more, whether the opposition was Real Madrid or Wraith Rovers. Jim's career at Rangers began in 1960, and he became the keystone of the brilliant Ibrox team of 1960-65. He relished nothing greater than beating Celtic, which in those days happened regularly. Here's that said right, Scott, taking the first corner. Davis has it. And it's a goal! Yes! I said already, he's Celtic's most dangerous forward. Baxter takes it. Baxter. Perrin coming over. Scott. Perrin still coming on. Baxter to Wilson. He's outside left. Bren. And it must be yes, it is. In the 1963 Scottish Cup final, Rangers beat Celtic 3-0, but thanks to Baxter's skills it could easily have been more. Let's wait for an exciting tense Cup final match. Touch on to Miller, Miller will pass to Henderson. Grand scores! Rolling it towards Craig. Baxter. to Wilson Brand a shot on the corner of the ball into the net an incredible goal by Ralph Brand Jim was also part of the treble winning team of 1964 in the cup final they met Dundee only the outstanding performance of their goalkeeper Bert Slater prevented Rangers scoring until the final two minutes Baxter coolly flicking the ball in towards McLean. McLean gets it to his left foot, turns it across to Baxter. A great chance here for Baxter to score. Stopped by Slater. Again, Slater miraculously falls on it. No wonder Brand applauds. Henderson, over it comes. Miller heads it in. It's a goal! Miller has scored for Rangers. About 90 seconds to go, the free kick to Rangers. Henderson at outside left, collects it from Baxter. Henderson inside the box, chips it to the far post. Miller's there. And the ball's on the net. Miller scores in the last minute for Rangers. Unfortunately, very little footage of the Baxter genius still exists. Although his exploits are still fresh in the memories of the older supporters. 
One great moment which has survived was the 1967 Scotland vs England match at Wembley, which Scotland won 3-2. The performance of Baxter that day has now become legendary. Scotland slowing it down. Taking the mickey out of this England side. Such arrogance is hard to find today, and it's a testament to the skill and attitude of one of Rangers' greatest ever players, Jim Baxter. The number seven jersey goes to a player who played 150 times exactly in his Rangers career. He scored 44 goals. He won three league championships, a Scottish Cup and four League Cup medals. Uh, sorry, one League Cup medal. The number seven jersey goes to the greatest non-Scot, Brian Loudrup. Loudrup, he's got McCoy's, he's got Hadley, Weir on the right. He decides to go at the one, brilliant play by Loudrup! Oh, magnificent goal! It was, it was amazing because, um, I mean, as you say, you know, players from from the present, but players from the past as well were there. Um, players that I've only watched on uh, on videotapes and on television. And uh, as I say again, you know, it must be difficult to pick out the living players because you could go back and and, and mention uh, some of the, the really old players that were there last night. So I think it's difficult um, to to point out the living players and pick them. But but it was great to to see that um, even. Let's say fans uh, from from let's say the 80s and 90s, uh, they they recognise players that played 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, and, and I th thought that was great. And um, uh, whether this is the best team ever, uh, well, well, you can uh, discuss that from from now till uh, next uh, next year. But um, but nevertheless, it was a great honour to be to be in there. Having already won the greatest non-Scot award and having played a key role in some of the nine in a row victories, it was no surprise that he was included in the greatest team lineup. However, being voted the greatest non-Scot meant a great deal to Brian. When the three nominees were mentioned, um, Mark Heatley, who I must admit uh, I thought uh, could could win it because he's been a great servant for this club and obviously Gascoigne uh, um, that speaks for itself and and when I was mentioned as, as um, perhaps uh, the, the best player, uh, foreign player to have played for Rangers, um, I was amazed and, and as I said you know speechless because um, so many foreign players, great foreign players have been playing for this club, have done extremely well and uh, if you look at some of the names um, I'm very proud to be on top of that. Like so many other great players, it's difficult to pick one single game that Brian excelled in more than any other. But his performance in the Scottish Cup semi-final in 1996 was outstanding. Jury, oh, Ladrup has sprung clear. Brian Ladrup past Marshall. And Rangers fail, they got one foot in the final. To chest the ball, then take only one touch to beat the goalkeeper, shows the ultimate in control and confidence. But Brian had both in abundance. Loudrop goes inside again. He has Anderson winning in the middle with McCoist. Anderson. Loudrop again. He's onside. Genius again from Loudrop. Well, that's close. It's a good one. That hits Loudrop. It's a classic from Loudrop. Yeah, I think um, sometimes perhaps people think that when when a foreign player says, "Oh, I love to play for this club," and they think, "Oh, it's just for for the you know for the papers and, and for television," but um, I said when I left Rangers that uh, Rangers would always have a, a special place in my heart, and uh, and I felt like that last night as well, and that tells you that um, I've got special feelings for for this club, and I enjoyed every minute of of my four year stay here. And sometimes you, you can always look back and say, uh, I would like to enjoy that again and, and play with the same players again. But uh, that was an era and that's over. But I was uh, very proud to be part of that. The number eight. That phrase rings a bell, doesn't it? The number eight played 103 times and scored 39 goals. He won two league titles, a Scottish Cup and a League Cup. And the Rangers' greatest ever team, Paul Gascoigne. Loudrop, way for our bats. 
It was an emotional return to Glasgow for Paul Gascoigne. His love for the Irish club is well documented and he was welcomed like a prodigal son by the supporters. It's only fitting he received such a reception because Paul Gascoigne at his peak was simply one of the greatest players in the world. It was a brilliant decision by Walter Smith to sign him in 1995 as was proved in his first league goal against Celtic. Easily by McLaren, two against two up front here. Selenko and McCoy together. That's good play by Selenko. McCoy says Gascoigne racing through the middle. It's great play for Rangers. And Gascoigne has scored! It's a magnificent goal by Gascoigne! Paul was arguably the most naturally gifted player to play for Rangers. He could not only make scoring goals look easy, but command the midfield as well and set up goal scoring chances for others. That's where he started it. Wants to get involved further forward from Taylor's pass. He's done well to hook it across, but Marshall should make it his against McCoy. Jury for Gascoigne, he's taking it on and it lacked only the finish. In his first season he was a revelation, scoring 14 league goals despite missing some games through injury. However, in the league clincher that year, he showed what he could do in the most spectacular fashion. There's Gascoigne now, can he produce some magic? Still it's Gascoigne! Oh yes! Had a header which was touched over by Gorham. It's been very evenly balanced. Here's Gascoigne now pushing forward, showing great determination. Oh, he's done it again! It's unbelievable! Well, I could say he was perhaps keeping something for the closing stages. He had gone a bit quiet, but he was obviously keeping something for a long busting run. He goes right through the defence. And what a marvellous finish! Rangers 2, Aberdeen 1, and they're on course for 8th in a row. It's Gascoigne who's going to take this one, and Gascoigne has already scored from the penalty spot. This is the hat trick in the championship! Such outrageous displays of talent dispelled any doubts the critics might have had about bringing Paul to Ibrox. During the following season, his performances were to be just as outstanding. As Gascoigne breaks into a shooting position, he's done it! The spark of genius again, just what is required. Paul Gascoigne was indeed a genius when it came to football. He could score goals, he could run a game from the midfield and also be a great provider. But it's his personality and his sparkle on the pitch which Rangers fans will no doubt miss the most. This is McCoy. Gascoigne's kept moving forward here. Great play by Gascoigne. Celtic players can't believe it. Gascoigne might punish them now on the counter attack. Celtic are through the back. Low drop, wide for Alberts. There's Gascoigne!
Just three to go, ladies and gentlemen, to make up Rangers' greatest ever team. The number nine shot, and how many great contenders there are for that jersey. This guy played 581 games and scored 355 goals. The all-time top league scorer for the club. Eight league championships, a Scottish Cup, no fewer than nine League Cup medals. Alastair McCoyst! And the 189th Holdsburg League game gets underway. That is the quickest free kick I think I've seen in an Old Firm match. What is a great goal! Ali McCoyst! Right out the blue, right through the Celtic defence. 27 seconds. As we've already seen, Ali's record for Rangers has been simply breathtaking. The greatest striker the club has known, his ability to make scoring look easy, relied his great positional awareness and goal scoring ability. A definite candidate for the greatest Ranger ever. by McPherson. Now it's Durant. Good ball through to Ali McCoyst, who's on side. McCoyst! 2 1 to Rangers! Number 10. 222 games, 115 goals, five championships, two Scottish Cups, three League Cup medals. The number 10 shot for Mark Hitley. To the opposition, Mark was one of the most fearful players in the pitch. His strength and aerial dominance meant that he could so often decimate defences and score. Well, it's played on well by Hatley for Johnston. Here's Hatley again, switching to his left foot. It's a second for Rangers. It's Mark Hatley once again. And Pat Bonner is utterly dejected. It's a great honour, I mean, to even be in the category, to, uh, even to be able to be, have played for Rangers, I think. Um, it's a great honour. And as I say, to, to be voted in, 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 in the best 11 is, is, for me, you know, one of the, the top accolades I've had, especially playing for such a great club. I mean, I played for big clubs, uh, Milan and Monaco, but uh, nothing as big as this. Mark wasn't simply the big target man for long balls to be hit into the area for. He had excellent ball control and a deceptive turn of speed, allowing him to score in almost any situation. A superb finish by Hatley. Hatley's ball inside, picked up by McCall. That's fine play by Hatley. His pace is good enough here. It's a great chance for Rangers. That was brilliant. Here's Hatley, in the clear, it's a great chance for Rangers, Hatley against Bonner, brilliant play from Hatley, Rangers take the lead, ecstasy there for Hatley. Five goal deficit. Durant playing it through for Hatley. The chance on now for McCall. Hatley's header. Oh, that's magnificent. That's a great header by Hatley for his second goal of the game. Mark's presence was extremely valuable to the team. In him, they knew they had a powerful player whose focus was so sharp that he let little or nothing stand in his way. Even now, Mark looks back with great affection to his days at Ibrox for the great camaraderie of the team and, of course, the reaction he got from the Rangers supporters. That was a big part of my career, big part of my life. Um, I had great times here and lots of good friends here. As I say, it's uh, an amazing place to play, an amazing set of supporters. Um, you know, I love playing for them. You know, 
I've always admired. So I said to David, David Murray, I thanked him for giving me the uh, the the chance to play for Rangers. And you know, I say it, I say it a lot, but I, you know, it's it's a heartfelt uh, um, um, thing when I do say it. I mean, it's it's as I say, it's, I've been around and I've played a few places, but uh, this is number one for me. Walters wants to bring the ball down and take on right. Going for the early cross, there's Haithley! It's a magnificent goal for Rangers! Five minutes from half-time and out from zero. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, to make up Rangers' greatest ever team, the number 11 jersey to a player who played 540 times for the club. He scored 75 goals, won three league titles, three Scottish Cups and seven League Cup medals. He was taken from us far too soon. Davy Cooper. Roberts is dictating things. That's brilliantly stopped by Davy Cooper. The number 11 award was collected by Davy's brother John in recognition of Davy's contribution to the success of Rangers in his 12 years at the club. Davy's left foot was legendary, allowing him to dazzle defenders, often leaving them in his wake. But he was never afraid of taking on the responsibility of going for goal himself. Cooper shaping to take this. Jardin's there and for Scythe. In recognition of Davy's contribution to the success of Rangers in his 12 years at the club. Davy's left foot was legendary, allowing him to dazzle defenders, often leaving them in his wake but he was never afraid of taking on the responsibility of going for goal himself. Cooper shaping to take this. Jardin's there and for Scythe. Oh, what a goal! Clean oh. as a whistle, 2-1. performances are only a part of his great career and therefore he was naturally one of the three nominees for the greatest ranger of them all. I don't know what you can say about that lineup, ladies and gentlemen. I think you'd have paid an awful lot of money to see these 11 guys in a Rangers jersey all at the same time. The greatest Rangers team ever. And so it came to the moment when the supporters would choose their greatest ranger. It was not an easy task to pick only one from the greatest players of the past. And it goes to Cooper going in and Philippi. Cooper's still there, wants to chip across. That must be, yes! Derek Johnson. 25 minutes gone. Celtic Bell Rangers won. Great tackle by Goff. Richard Goff saved the day without question for Rangers. Ball breaks for McCall. Cathy Sims to Sinis. Oh, great play from Sinis. Got 
to it with uh, outstretched arms and strong fists. On the Tuesday against the most good end, the Tuesday of the wind we played. I had the chance that day, or the luck that I did, to score the penalty kick. Do a wally, like, do a heat <laughs> <in> this one. <laughs> but uh, it was good to see uh, Big Smith the kick. They got to me for the ball and play me for the first one, and uh, the second one, I got the penalty kick. And then a minute from time, Charlie Wilkins hit the post. Uh, very, very unfortunate to, not to win that day. But the Russians didn't take much time on their way back home to the rest of that. By O'Neill and Lambert to win. Rangers look for a goal and get one in the eighth minute from Brian Lambert. Rangers were awarded just before half time when Wilson, who'd already had a goal disallowed, got their second. Here's Ferguson, McDonald, to McMahon. Cooper's got it with a chance to score. David Cooper gets the equaliser for Rangers. In fact, Rangers were by far the more aggressive team throughout. Rand got their first in the seventh minute. Play by Russell. Greg might think about a shot. Plays a shot one. Greg still going and scoring. Henderson on the left wing. It's goal, yes, the Miller is scored. And then the ball can over the bar. On to Forrest. Henderson of Ranger. And a goal! Goal by Henderson. Look at the wee player. Well, that's one right out of the bag. Well, if he does that to Celtic Anfield, he'll get a reception. What's the hurry there? Great for McCoy. That's McCoy's inside. That's for Ali McCoy. Ritchie taking his first goal kick. McMillan. Brand to McMillan. Through to Henderson. Beautiful pass. Game nearing its end. The play to Jordan. Here's Russell. Over does it. McDonald with a chance. Jordan, yes! In third place, a man who is truly a great ranger. He wasn't just rangers through and through. He didn't just love the club. He was somebody that was very much a part of the club for all the years he was with us. And when he left rangers, he took a bit of the club with him in his heart. He had fabulous skill. He had that rare talent that very few players have. He could turn nothing into a goal by a movement, a pass, a turn of speed. He was a goal maker, he was a goal scorer. He was everything that Rangers could have asked from one of their true greats. The only tragedy is that he cannot be here with us tonight. And yet I'm sure that in this hall here tonight is the third place in the greatest ever Ranger, the late, truly great, David Cooper. past that United wall. And he's made it! Davy Cooper never hid his loyalty to Rangers. All his life he had been a supporter and it was always his ambition to play for the club. His skill in the ball was truly exceptional, making him a formidable opponent for any defender to cope with. but the power of his left foot from a set piece was awesome. Roberts is dictating things. 
was brilliantly stopped by David Cooper. His tragic death at the age of 39 not only robbed football of one of its greatest talents, but also took away a man of humility and great compassion. It's unlikely we'll ever see his likes again. I make it five and a half minutes remaining of the Skull Cup final. Penalty to Rangers. 2 1. I'd like to thank everybody for voting for David. He, um, he was a true Ranger, he supported Rangers as a boy all through school and when he played for Rangers that was his dream come true. Um, he was a man of few words, he liked to do his talking on the football park and, and I'll do the same. Um, I just wish I was sitting down there watching him collect this. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in second place, uh, a man who is here tonight, uh, a man who has been the bane of my existence throughout all the years I've been involved with the board of Rangers Football Club. He has never missed an opportunity to tell me how good he is. I never missed an opportunity to remind him of how many goals he actually missed. But again, if you want to think of somebody whose heart is with Rangers, and who has Rangers in his heart, then it is the second place in the greatest ever Ranger. Who else but the Super One himself, Alistair McCoy. Super Ali thoroughly deserves his accolade. The boy from East Kilbride, who was signed for his favourite team by John Gregg, became one of the Rangers' greats. He not only scored goals, but was always an ambassador for the club wherever he went. His goal scoring is legendary sometimes scoring a goal from seemingly nothing, getting into positions to make it look easy. Here's Dale Gold, this is a good chance for Rangers, right on half-time whistle, cross to Haidley, here's McCoy! Although Ali McCoy has moved on, his heart will always be at Ibrox. I can't, I can't believe it. I nearly, nearly wasn't he get allowed to say something there. Um, if, I, if I could just be very brief, I want to tell you my greatest moment with Rangers. Um, and I've been very, very privileged and proud to play with some great, great men. But my greatest moment with Rangers, and it probably surprised a few of you, was uh, when we were defeated by Hearts in the Scottish Cup final last season. And we were in the dressing room, all the boys, after and a few of us were leaving and the gaffer came in, Walter came in and said a few words and I've never seen so many grown men on their way to talk to each other in tears because we knew it was the end for some of us in an era for Rangers Football Club but the great thing was that Rangers Football Club will always, always continue to prosper because we are a people, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, amidst many great players, this man is truly the greatest ever Ranger. Like Willie Waddle, he served this club in every single capacity. He always gave 100% for the club. And I can tell you that since the day he joined Rangers Football Club to this very day, he does nothing, he says nothing, he takes no decision without wondering how it will affect this club. This club means everything to him, and it is right that he means everything to this club. If you have a son who wants to play football, there's only one man who can be the true mentor, who can actually show what it is like to show loyalty, determination, and courage. And this man had them all, and he had some more. He is also a great and dear personal friend, and I, like you, love him more than I can say. He deserves his title, the legend himself, the greatest ever Ranger, John Gregg. No one could have doubted that John Gregg would win this award. 
He was the only player to win three trebles and was one of the greatest captains ever. In fact, it's impossible to separate Rangers and John Gregg, but even he was almost overwhelmed by this occasion. Uh, still trying to accept uh, the, the importance of the award and the day after it's uh, still to sink in, Gordon. Uh, you've been a player here yourself, you know you know, you know what it's like. Uh, I think I think when all these players started walking into the room last night, it makes you feel uh, very humble. Uh, and really, uh, to be spoken in the same breath as some of these guys would have been enough for me, let alone win this award. Ralph Brand and Jimmy Miller used to share the daily train journey from Edinburgh with the young John Gregg. Their stories of great Rangers matches inspired the youngster when he played in his first Old Firm match in January 1963. Here's Greg coming in, on to Brand. Greg again, it's a goal, and that makes it three. Inside forward, Greg has made it Rangers three, Celtic nil. John was a hard tackler, but never dirty always defending strongly, especially against Celtic, and he often began moves which allowed others to score. Rangers have beaten Celtic four times already this season. Greg on the forest. Henderson of Rangers. And a goal! Goal by Henderson! But it's as captain that John will be remembered. His determination to keep fighting until the very end, no matter the scoreline, proved his spirit and dedication for Rangers. That attitude was best demonstrated in 1975, when although injured, he played in the league clincher to stop Celtic winning 10 in a row. A good pass forward to McKean. McKean going on the outside, getting it across. Chance for Steen and a goal! That championship victory was the first for 10 years. As captain of Scotland and Rangers, John could have moved on to virtually any club, but to the relief of the support, he remained at Ibrox. The Rangers supporters appreciated what I, what I was trying to do, and, and I think they appreciated I stayed, why I stayed. And uh, like I knew, I knew within myself that the times would change. But while the team was going through the transitional period, you just had to roll your sleeves up a bit higher and get on with it. Times did change. In the 1970s, Rangers won two trebles with John as captain. John Gregg, the Rangers supporters, had their hero. He stuck with them through the bad times and saw his faith in the club pay off. His greatest moment in Europe came in 1972. Rangers won the European Cup Winners' Cup by beating Moscow Dynamo in Barcelona after victory over Rennes, Sporting Lisbon, Torino and in the semi-final, the mighty Bayern Munich. However, it's as a true blue in every sense that John Gregg will be celebrated as the greatest Ranger. I'm obviously very proud to stand here this evening and accept this award. Uh, I would just like to say first of all though, I was very fortunate when I was a player to receive a few awards and I've always felt that football was a team game and I would like to take this opportunity publicly to thank every player that I played with in a blue jersey. Many of them... Pay off. Pay off. His greatest moment in Europe came in 1972. Rangers won the European Cup Winners' Cup by beating Moscow Dynamo in Barcelona after victory over Rennes, Sporting Lisbon, Torino and in the semi-final the mighty Bayern Munich. However, it's as a true blue in every sense that John Gregg will be celebrated as the greatest Ranger. I'm obviously very proud to stand here this evening 
and accept this award. Uh, I would just like to say, first of all, though, I was very fortunate when I was a player to receive a few awards, and I've always felt that football was a team game. And I would like to take this opportunity publicly to thank every player that I played with in a blue jersey. Many of them are sitting out there tonight, and uh, without you lads, I couldn't have been standing here accepting an award. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody who take the trouble of voting for everybody, because I don't think there's any losers. I think it's a privilege to play for an institution like Glasgow Rangers Football Club. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I don't usually talk like this, but... Uh, I'm usually a very private man as far as my family's concerned, but my family's been with me, especially my wife, all through my career at Ibrox. And uh, particularly a year ago when I got a wee fright, I saw Coyce the gun in his pocket and buying a drink. <laughs> but I'm absolutely delighted that my wife's had the opportunity to come this evening, and along with my son, and join in what is really a special night for me and my family. And I thank you, Vincent, for all that. Finally, I'd just like to say that uh, in how many years I've got left to serve the club, I hope I can continue to do so with the same dignity and the honour in which the supporters have shown to me tonight. And it's been, always been a pleasure, and I hope it will be a pleasure for the rest of the time for it to be associated with Rangers Football Club. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.